Good evening, everyone. This is Prophetess Angela Richardson, and I'm coming on to do a little slight, small teaching on today. I'm not going to be on here long. Um, I want to talk to you out of my new book. Um, it came out June the 27th, um, the day before my birthday. Um, but before I get started, I'm going to go ahead and say a word of, um, for, no, I'm going to wait. I'm going to go ahead and invite a couple of people, and then, um, then I'm going to pray. And then we're going to go forth. So just give me a few minutes. Like I said, I, I don't foresee you being on here long. I'm just going to invite a couple people and then we're going to go forth. Um, we, I'm going to be talking out of my new book. 100, part 2 of 180 Days. Of communion with God daily devotional um, it's actually a very good book not saying it because I wrote it but uh, me and the Holy Spirit wrote it and so um, it's gonna the lesson on today is gonna really gonna be a blessing to you whenever you get ready to hear it so I invited a couple people so I'm gonna pray then I'm gonna get over here and get started like I said I don't foresee being on here too long um, I, today has been a real busy day for me, but I'm, um, I'm still going to do what I'm required to do. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give a word of prayer. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, it's again that we come to the throne of mercy and grace. Lord, we pray right now that you anoint my voice right now, anoint my uh, mouth right now in Jesus' name as I speak the word of God, anoint the heart so they can receive what is what you're saying in this hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so I'm coming out of this book. Um, this is my new book, part two of 180 days of communion with God daily devotional. And you can purchase this book on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles. Um, I think it's walmart.com or anywhere books uh, can be sold. You 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 can purchase this book. Um, this, the day I'm, I'm going to do um, the devotional for today, which is July the 7th, and this is the devotional I'm going to do today. Hey, Prophetess Gigi. Hey, Sister Ebony. Hey, Prophetess Tara. How you doing? So I'm going to, I'm just going to do uh, the devotional for today, you know, so you can get a, um, um, get a, um, um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for, but you can see how the book flows. You know, that's what, I, yeah, that's what I want you to want to say. So now you can see how the book flows. You know, it goes all the way from July, all the way to, to December. And each, uh, day has a scripture. Um, then it has a, um, a, a particular word was picked out. You know, um, God gave me whatever word to pick out and I defined it according to Mary and Wester. And also um, define it according to the Greek word or the Hebrew word. And so then it talks about what the scripture is about. Um, so the scripture that I'm going to use today is on, this is July the 7th. Um, it said Acts 16, 25 through 26. And I'm coming from the New King James Version. It said, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners was listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everybody, everyone's chains were loosened. So this is, it's Paul and Silas. You know, I don't know if you know the story of Paul and Silas or why they was in jail, but just in case you don't know why they was there, let me, I'm going to go back and read for you. I'm coming from Acts and I'm going to be reading out the Amplified Bible for this. So I'm coming from Acts um, 16 starting at verse 16 and um and i'm gonna go ahead and read you and let you know why they was in jail you know so many may not know why they was there but i'm gonna go ahead and read and tell you why they was there said it happened that as as we were on our way to the place of prayer we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination that is a demonic spirit claiming to foretell the future and discovered hearing the knowledge and she brought her owners a good prophet by fortune telling. So, but she had, um, she was a slave girl and she had people that owned her. And so they, she made money for these people, you know, so she followed after Paul and us and kept screaming and shouting. These men are servants of the most high God. They are proclaiming to you the way of salvation. 
And so then verse 18 says, she continued doing this for several days. So every day they went through there, here she come. You know, she coming and she's she, um, decreeing and declaring the same thing over here. Here are, the, here are the, um, the, these men are servants of the most high God. They are proclaiming to you to the way of salvation. Every time they went through there, the, here she comes. She's coming, she's coming to, to decree and declare that over them. So then Paul began being greatly annoyed. So Paul is, Paul said he was annoyed at this point. You know, when she came that last time, Paul was really annoyed. Like, man, she going, you know, I'm just paraphrasing that. This is me. Now, man, is she going to keep saying that every time we walk through here? So at this particular time, when she walked through them, said, then Paul being greatly annoyed and worn out, turned and said to the spirit inside of her, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ as his representative to come out of her and it came out at that very moment so paul used this authority the same authority that we have you know what i'm saying and so you know um god, uh, god is the same yesterday and for, forevermore so we have that same authority god, jesus and through and it came through jesus he has given us that same authority so you know paul you know like i said he uses authority and he spoke to that spirit that was inside of that young lady and that spirit left that young lady and immediately she was normal. She no longer was able to prophesy, you know, well, she was prophesying, but she was using uh, the, it, the the devil's um, entryway. She wasn't, um, she wasn't using God's way to go to, to do prophecy. And she was used doing it illegally. I put it like that. So she was using uh, the dark way. She was going through um, the through familiar spirits to be able to do it. And, and basically, you know, when they, when they're using familiar spirits, they're talk, actually talking to demons, you know what I'm saying? So she was doing the, using it, doing it through the dark side, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, so when Paul, like he said, she just kept coming, you know, and just like, you know, with, with us, the enemy knows who we are. He knows uh, the, the, the level of authority that we carry and, you know, and so what we have to do, you know, when he's, the enemy is coming at us all type of ways, you know what I'm saying? We have the same authority that Paul did to be able to cast these demons out, these different spirits out, out of these different people. But you got to be rooted and grounded in God. Everybody can't do it. You know what I'm saying? You got to, you got to be, have a close relationship with God. You got to be uh, saved full of the Holy Ghost and fire because, you know, we would not, we can't do it on our own strength. You're going to, it's going to take the Holy Ghost to be able to cast, you know, these spirits out someone. And, you know, so, you know, um, so Paul, like, he got frustrated. He said, why does she keep following us and saying this thing over and over and over? So he immediately used his authority and he said, uh, come out of her. And, you know, and it came out at that very moment. He said, but her owners saw that their hope of profit was gone. So now her owners know she, they can't use her for profit anymore. So she can't be doing no fortune telling. She can't have people come in there with the crystal ball and them cards and stuff. So she can't do that anymore because, you know, uh, that spirit that was in him, that her, that demonic spirit that was in her has been cast out. So she's no longer able to make money for these, for the men that was on her owners. He said, they see Paul and Silas and drag them before the authorities in the marketplace where trials were held. So they took Paul and Silas to the, to the authorities in that area. And, uh, and they, uh, said Paul and Silas was over there making, uh, doing things they didn't have no business doing. And so he said, and when they had brought them before the chief magistrate, they said, these men who are Jews are throwing our city into confusion and causing trouble. So now they're going to tell the magistrate that Paul is, Paul and Silas were calling, causing trouble. But actually they wasn't all, all they was doing that all the woman that was following them, you know, she had a demonic spirit on the inside of her. And so then Paul, like you said, he got annoyed at that spirit. So he was able to cast that spirit out. So no, she would no longer could make money for her holders. You know, I, I said holders for the people, for the men that was, that was her uh, owners. She could no longer make money for them. So they got mad and they took Paul and Silas to the magistrates. And so they said that Paul and Silas was causing confusion and causing trouble in that area. Said they were publicly teaching customs which are unlawful for us as Romans to accept and observe. So they said they was uh, publicly teaching customs. And, you know, um, but all they did was cast the, the demonic spirit out. And, you know, said, and they, the people got uh, that own her got mad. 
And so they took them before the magistrates. And then it drops down in verse 22. It said the crowd also joined in the attack. So now, you know, um, when, uh, you know, when people, you know, people may not like each other, but they'll get together against you. You know, I'm, I'm just hearing this right here. So sometimes time people may not like each other. You may have a person here and a person over there and they don't really like each other, but they don't like you, but they'll get together against you. You know what I'm saying? So now the other people that were standing around, they join in on it, you know, and said, and, and against them and the chief magistrate tore their clothes off of them and ordered that Paul and Silas to be beaten with rods. So they was beaten, you know, for just casting out a, a demonic spirit, you know, because the people couldn't make any money off of the young lady anymore. So after striking them many times with the rods, they threw them into a prison, into prison, commanding the jailer to guard them securely. So this is why they was thrown in, in prison, because, you know, the, um, the woman that was demonically uh, possessed, I put it like that, she kept, uh, uh, every time Paul and Silas go through this area, here she come, you know, you know, she's steady, you know, steady saying, you know, different things. And then and when Paul got annoyed, he just went on ahead and cast that spirit out. So this is why they're in jail. So this is where I'm, my teaching in my book is finna start. So now if you didn't know why they was there, so this is why they're there. For, um, I, you know, they was there for um, demonstrating, walking in demonstration. That's why they was there. Because they walked in demonstration, you know, they they didn't just talk the talk the talk, but they actually walked the walk. So they walked was walking in demonstration. It says so. I'm gonna pick it up right here in my book. Back again. It said Acts 16 25 through 26. You know, and they was in there. So you know, at midnight, you know, they knew they was in jail. They know know they was locked up. And um, from what I, my reading there, they was they was chained. Not only on it, you know, uh, they was they feet and, um. Both of their feet, you, you know, the ankles, they were chained around their ankles, ankles, and they was in the deepest part of the prison. They was in dark, you know, they're down there in darkness. And so what they did was, you know, they began, once, one said they're, um, they're going to sing a song and one going to pray a prayer. So they got down there and began to worship God. But I, wanna, I don't want to get ahead of myself, so let me go back to this reading. It said, Paul inside of it was beaten and thrown into jail because the girl... But the spirit of divination could no longer make money for them, her masters. Paul commanded the demonic spirit to come out of her in Jesus' name. And the spirit came out of her. Her masters brought them to the magistrate, claiming that they were troubling the city. They were beaten and thrown into prison and fastened their feet with stocks so they couldn't move. So, you know, I, I'm reading the same thing I read to you out of the Bible. So you, this, this lets you know it's coming straight from the word of God. It ain't nothing Angela said. It's coming from straight from the word of God. He said, but, but regardless of that fact, they had a prayer meeting in the jail where they were. So, you know, they had a prayer meeting. You know, you know how we do back in the, back in the old days when we used to have prayer meetings, you know, you know, we, uh, someone will pray a prayer, somebody sing a song. And the next thing you know, um, the spirit of God began to, began to come in the room and, you know, anybody that came in there bound, they didn't leave bound. They was, you know, cause there's no way in the world that the spirit of God is moving in, in a, in, in a, in an area of uh, moving in a, a, um, a meeting or a, a church service. There's no way in the world that anybody should be able to walk out of there still bound when the spirit of God is moving. You know what I'm saying? So they said they, they began to uh, have prayer meeting in the, in the prison, you know, and they was in the lowest part of the prison, but you know, they didn't, um, they, you know, many times we know when we're going through, you know, I'm just going, you know, I'm just reminded, you know, when a lot of times we're going through, you know, we, we, we don't think about worshiping God. You know, these men was in the, had already been beaten. I'm sure they was, they was in pain. I'm sure they were, you know what I'm saying? They had the clothes ripped off them and they was beaten and then they was told it was, um, they didn't get no medical attention. I'm, you know, it's just me. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. They didn't get no medical attention. They were just put in the lowest part of the prison. They legs and their hands were shackled. You know what I'm saying? And you know, and the first thing they thought about was praising the Lord. You know what I'm saying? But many times when we going through, you know, first, you know, first, first thing we're going to think about is complaining or, uh, you know, God, why you do this and do, do, you know, why, why does all this happen to us? And why is this happening to me? And why are these people coming against me? And, and, you know, so now, you know, instead of us, you know, doing just like they did, 
we 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 will we're commumbling and complaining you know what i'm saying but you, we see here they didn't mum i didn't read nowhere that they murmured i didn't read nowhere that they complained i just read that they had a prayer meeting and so they begin to usher it in the presence of the lord and you know and so just, just the same with us you know what i'm saying when we're going through and different things is going on around us it may not be uh pleasant it may not even feel good what is going on with us you know a lot of things may coming at us somebody you know maybe over there lying on us and and maybe somebody don't walk out our life or whatever and instead of us mumbling complaining and uh walking into oppression you know and, and different things we need to get before the lord we need to get in the presence of god and when we begin in the if when we begin to get in the presence of god and you know and uh, uh just open our heart and pour out our heart to him there's no way in the world that when we leave from his presence in in the shekinah glory there's no way in the world that you still should be depressed there's no way in the world if if you are you ain't you ain't went you ain't went deep enough you ain't you ain't you ain't deep enough if you walking out still depressed if you've been in the presence of god you that mean you ain't you didn't go to the holies of holies you still in the outer courts or maybe you in the middle in the uh inner courts but you didn't go into the holies of holies so we need to make sure that we're going into the holies of holies getting in the presence of god so that uh, and so the um uh, so the shekinah glory so God can remove all this, all this negative stuff that the enemy is trying to put on us. You know where I mean. You know uh, they was, they was in the. I, I'm just, I'm just hearing like the belly of the whale, like Jonah was in the belly of the whale. You know what I'm saying? After he was there all them days, you know, and then he come to his senses, you know, and he uh, repented. And you know, then that fish um, the, that God had prepared for him spit him up, and he been, he went running and doing what God was telling him to do. You know what I'm saying? So you know, I'm just here. I'm just reading this book. You know, in in the Bible, I didn't hear, I didn't read now place where they was complaining and mumbling and complaining. I read that they was beaten, they was clothes was torn off of them, they was beaten. I'm sure they was in pain. I'm sure they was beaten. I mean, I'm sure they was bleeding. You know, and then they put them in them chains and uh, put them uh, um, um, shackles on their ankles. And I'm sure they were shackled on their hands. And then they had a guard standing over them. And, and the first thing they could think about was praising the Lord. And that's the same thing we have to do. We don't, you know, co <laughs> we don't need to be walking around here. You know, I'm just face long, face all, all you know, our counting is all out of order. When we already know that if we get in the presence of God and get into the, the holies of holies, that anything that's on us that is not of God has to, we're going to, it's going to be taken off us. And we're going to come out of that. When we come out of worship, we're going to come out lighter. We'll no longer be walking in depression. We no longer be walking in, um, you know, woe is me. We won't, we won't have woe is me anymore because we get in the presence of God. Like I said, I ain't praying no being in this on this loan, but I, I I see God taking me somewhere. But we 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 have to be, you know what I'm saying? You know, when you're going through, you know, and you know, a lot of times you can't reach anybody. A lot of times, you know, get in the presence of God, put you on some worship music, and you know, if you if you if you got a saint, you can sing, you know, many times I sing, I ain't got no singing voice, but I do make a joyful noise. And it sounds good to me and it sounds good to God because he's not listening for no sweet and pretty voice. He's looking at my heart and where I'm coming from out of my heart. If I'm passionate about what I'm doing, you know what I'm saying? That is what he's looking at. Man looks at the outer appearance, but God is looking at my heart. So when I go and worship, I'm going to the holies of holies. I'm not going to get down there and not go to the holies of holies. And anything that's on me that is not of God, I'm going to leave it where I'm going to leave it. It's going to drop off of me. And when I come out of that, out of praise and I come out of worship, I'm no longer going to feel the way I did when I went in there. So if you're feeling the same way when you did, when you went in there, then you didn't, you didn't go straight. You ain't in there. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't in the holies of holies because there's no way you could be in the presence of God and in his presence and come out still feeling the same way. There's no way. But anyway, um, let me get back in my lesson. I don't got excited y'all. 
but let me get back in, in my lesson. He said uh, they didn't let their circumstances deter their praise. And, you know, we can't let our circumstances deter, deter our praise. Hey, I've been in, you know, you know, I'm just saying, I've been in relationships that didn't last, didn't work. You know, I've been in domestic violence relationships. And, you know, uh, I remember in that, in that second marriage I was in, I was, you know, I was in the Lord and that he wasn't, and I was going to try to make it work. You know how we is. We try to make it work. We're going to just, you know, we can, we think we God. We're going to try to make it work. But no, honey, I went through some things. You hear me? You hear me what I'm saying? Some things that, you know, if I would just listen to the Lord or even pray and ask God, I wouldn't even been in there. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, but, but, but going back to what I'm saying, I went through some things. I went through some hits, some calling me out my name, all kind of things. I, I went to uh, to the point that I almost had a nervous breakdown because of this this steady 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 steady. You know I kept supposed to get up to go to work the next morning. Got to oh, he got this person got to argue all night long, and you knowing you got to get up to go to work the next morning. Get up the that next morning, tired. Get on up, get on that on, on that in that uh, car, go on to that job. And, and you can't even function like you, you want to function because you're tired because you didn't need somebody to argue all night long, you know what I'm saying? Fussed all night long about nothing. And so now you get to your job, you can't even function like you're supposed to function. And, you know, you, go, you, then you get to the point that you don't even want to come home no more because it's confusion at your home. And, you know, and what God allows me to be able to get out of that relationship. And I prayed and I said, Lord, I said, nah. I know this is my doing. I know it when you didn't you didn't do this, but this is my doing. If you help me get out of this relationship, you don't have to worry about me no more. And then when it came to a head on our anniversary, it came to a head. He goes, uh, I just had an I done had all I can take. I can't take no more, God. I don't work, I don't try to work at this marriage, and I'm just working by myself because he ain't trying in this marriage. I'm, I'm I ain't, I ain't no use to being in love by myself, you know what I'm saying? And so um I said, Lord, I said, if you just get me out of this relationship, you ain't gotta worry about me no more. And then when it came to head on our anniversary, I was at my job. He gonna call and say, bring me some flowers. I said, oh no, we, we done passed the flowers. Uh-uh, I don't even want no flowers. I went out there, he put them on the car and throw them in, <laughs> throw them in the back seat. I'm just, be, I'm just being transparent. I'm just being real. I throw them in the back seat and I got home that night and he was just trying to talk. I said, no, uh, uh, um, I, I, I don't have it. I, I, I don't have it. I'll okay, take, I mean, you know, I mean, I, cause I, I, I just felt like, um, God want better for me. You know what I'm saying? You know, a lot of times we think we know what's best for us, but we don't. Well, I'm just being real. We don't know what's best for us, but God knows what's best for us. You know what I'm saying? And so when we we'll let God be God in our lives, he's going to give us his very best. So we won't have to be compromising. So we won't have to be, you know, having all these different things going on in our lives. And so then, um, so then, uh, um, when, like you said, I think came to a head and, you know, we, I, everybody said our words and I, and I said, no, uh, uh, I, I'm through. Uh, uh, no, I'm through. Yeah, I, I done had all kind of, I can take of this, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, so when I got ready to leave there, he, that, that he went to work, I began to pack my clothes. And then when I got ready to, um, leave, I was singing, I'm, I was worshiping God when I left there. I was singing, I'm free, praise the Lord, I'm free, no longer bound, no more change holding me. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. You know what I'm saying? You know, so I, you know, I got on out that relationship, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, last time we think we, we think it's, you, we think, uh, we know what's best. No, we don't. We don't know what's best for us. We are, we need to let, let God, we need to talk to God and let God lead us because we do not know what's best for us. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, at, at this point in time, you know, once I got out of all those domestic violence relationships and I allowed God to heal Angela, you know, once I let God heal me and, and you know, now I was no longer wounded. I was no longer bleeding all over everywhere. And I was no longer attracting those type of men because I began to ask God, now, what is about me, God? That why I keep attracting those same kind of men. They got the same, they got the same personality, but they got a different name. What is about me? 
You know, I asked God about me. What is about me? He let me know because you're not healed. You're broken. And broken people attract broken pre people. Wounded people attract wounded people. There's no other way in the world a, a wounded person can attract a healed person. It's no way in the world because you know, you know, you they get when the two wounded people get together, they're gonna be going over their story. You know, hey, you remember what happened? I, this this happened to me, you know, back in the day, and then then he and then the guy, yeah, yeah, this is this has happened to me too. And then then and now we comparing stories because cause we still wounded. You know what I'm saying? We still wounded. And now we bleeding all over each other. And now that's why nothing ain't going right like it's supposed to be going. Because we bleeding all over each other. Because we need, both of us need to be healed. And we will need to allow God to do it. There's no way we can do it on our own. I don't care how many, you know, sessions you go into, um, you know, um, you know, what you can do that. You know, I'm not, I'm not knocking the counseling or anything. If you need counseling, go and go get in counseling. But you know, it ta- it's gonna take deliverance for you to get free from the from that spirit. It's gonna take deliverance for you to get free. And so, when you allow God to come into your life and heal you of those areas, now you're no longer attracted to those type of people. You know what I'm saying? Because now you're gonna wait on God to give you what you need. You know what I'm saying? So when you when you wait on God and allow him to give you what you need, he's going to give you the right thing because he, you, you don't allow him to heal you in that area. And so now you're no longer attracted to the same thing that you were. You know what I'm saying? So now you're healed. So now you're going to be attracted to heal people. You know, so it's so very important that we realize you know, if you're not healed in that area, you know, allow God to heal you in that area. Because it's going to make it, it's going to be so important. It's, it's going to be so important. It said, you know, he didn't, they didn't allow their circumstances to deter their praise. God answered their praise and worship with a great earthquake that shook the whole jail. When the jailer woke and saw the doors open, he assumed that they were gone. And when the jail, when the jail, the jailer woke and saw they, the, um, uh, the doors was open. He assumed they was gone. But Paul called out to him to let him know that they were still there. They hadn't went anywhere. They were still there. It shook up the jailer so that he wanted to know what must he do to be saved. And so um, when the jailer saw that, he knew that had to be God to, sh- the, the, um, to shake the whole prison, just like an earthquake, to shake the whole prison. And then their, uh, the door was open and they was no longer bound. He know it. I mean, he know that they would. They couldn't have done it themselves. So it know it had to be God. So he wanted to know who, what the, the God that they knew. He wanted to know that God. You know, so he could be saved. You know what I'm saying? So this goes back to walking in demonstration. So we're gonna have to walk in demonstration. It's not all what we're saying. It's, you know, we're gonna say. You know, we're gonna say, and then we're gonna demonstrate. We're gonna say, and then we're gonna demonstrate. He said, uh, do, even doing praise and worship, the spirit of God is moving. So, you know, we're going to have to do praise and worship. If you're having issues in your life, I'm here to let you know, get in the presence of God, allow God to do what he want to do in you, you know, quit fighting the process. Many of us, God want to do so much in our lives, but he wants to heal us first before he release us different things to us. So allow him to heal what he need to heal in you. So you won't keep going around this mountain year after year, the same mountain. And you're asking God, and now you're still trying to do the same thing. And then you're asking God, oh God, why, why I'm still going around this mountain? Because you're refusing to allow to let God heal you in that area. Let God heal you. You know what I'm saying? And you know, to heal you to the point like he healed me. That I'm not, I'm not, I, domestic violence, uh-uh, that's a no-no with me. I don't even want no more, I don't want nothing to deal with no domestic violence. You hear me? Because I know I what my worth is right now. You know what I'm saying? Back then, I probably didn't know my worth, you know, because a lot of pain I've done, dealt with in my childhood and different things. I didn't know my worth, but I know my worth now. I'm just like the Proverbs 31 wo- woman. Precious as rubies, down, you know, rubies, you know what I'm saying? So I don't, you don't have to just settle just to say, for the sake that you have someone in your life. Don't settle. God wants better for us, you know what I'm saying? If you got a good husband, God bless you, you know what I'm saying? But, if, you know, if you're dating or whatever and, you know, maybe you've been married before 
and you know, and, and you and you was in a relationship where it was domestic violence like I was, that is not God's best for you. You know, I'm I'm going there. That is not God's best for you. You're the, you're supposed to be treated like the queen. You know, like the um, Song of Solomon, how he was talking about his wife, all of this from uh, uh, poetry and stuff that he was talking about his wife. That is the way we're supposed to be treated. We're not supposed to be called out our names. We're not we're not supposed to be slapped on and hit on. We're not supposed to be. That ain't that is not God's best for us. That is not God's best for us. That ain't what God wants for us. That is not what God wants for us. So, you know what I'm saying? You know, so um, you got to allow God to do what he wanted to do. So he had to heal me before I could get with my husband I am now. I had to be healed because if not, I'd have brought that same baggage to this relationship here. And now I'm comparing him to other men, you know, that abuse me. But he don't, my husband don't abuse me. He loves me. He treats me, you know, like the queen I am. You know what I'm saying? And that's how God wants it to be. To, for your spouse or your, you know, significant other to treat you as res respect, you know, show you respect. Don't disrespect you in any way. You know, that is what God wants for our, our relationships. Uh, we have, for us to have loving relationships, for how to, for how to love relationships to, that we're trusting each other, that we're standing up in the gap for each other. If my husband need, need prayer, I'm there to pray him through. If I need prayer, he's there to pray me through. That's what God wants for us. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's the type of marriage that God wants for his people. You know, loving marriages. He wants us to have lived an abundant life. That means in every area of our lives, even our marriages, he wants us to live the abundant life in our marriages. So we're having a prosperous marriage, you know what I'm saying, that we're loving each other. And in time we may have a disagreement that we ain't got to get mad and start calling nobody out their name, that you know you got the Spirit of God in you, and he got the Spirit of God in him. He know that when God, God get him out to himself, and he tell him, said, no, you, you know you ain't talked to her right. You need to go in there and make that right. Or he get to that woman and say, you know you, the Holy Spirit said, you know you ain't talked to him right. You need to go in there and make that right. And then you got to be mad enough, and you got to be woman enough to go in there and you make it right. Because if you don't, the enemy will use any avenue he can to come break up this marriage. He can't stand godly marriages. The enemy can't, you know what I'm saying? He can't stand that, you know what I'm saying? And so, you know, you got to allow God to do what he want to do in you. Many of us women, or uh, men too, now we're fighting, fighting, changing. It's, there ain't nothing wrong with changing. Ain't nothing wrong with changing. What's wrong? Ain't, nothing, ain't a thing wrong with changing, you know? Allow God to change you to a better you. That's nothing. I always pray all the time. Lord, make me a better wife. Lord, make me a better mama. Lord, Lord, make me a better grandmama. Lord, make me a better sister. Lord, make me a better auntie. I pray that all the time. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't, I know I don't have it together. You know what I'm saying? And I know I could always, we could all do better. Don't nobody have it damn up. You know what I'm saying? We could all do better. You know what I'm saying? We could all do better. You know, so, you know, so we allow God to do what he wanted you in you. He got it. He will set certain areas in your life that you need healing in. Let Allow him to heal you in that area. And so when you get healed in that area, now you're able to do it as a testimony and it won't bring back that pain. You know, that pain sometimes when you rem rem uh, remind you a certain thing that's happened and there's a pain there. But if you allow God to heal you in that area, now you can use that as a testimony. There's no more pain in that area because you're healed in that area. And so now when you uh, run up on someone else that's been going through that situation, now you're able to really truly help someone else get free when you allow, tell them what God has done for you so you have gotten free. So, you know, it's so very important that you allow God to free, 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 let God, he said, this, uh, where the uh, Lord is, um, there's uh, freedom, you know, he, he, he wants us to be free. You know, we don't have to, you know, we're, we're born again, full of the Holy Ghost, but we'll walk around here bound, you know, you know, with many of us, not, I'm just being real, many of us are not even happy, you know what I'm saying? But we don't, happiness, with me, happiness was not in a man. I'm just saying, for me, it wasn't. You know what I'm saying? Because I had a man, but I wasn't happy. I'm just, I'm just being real. 
You know what I'm saying? I had a man, but I wasn't happy. Cause I was, I was, you know, I was catching it. You know, every day I was catching it. I wasn't no, there was no happiness there. You know what I'm saying? So just to say I have a man and 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 can't have peace in my home, oh no, uh-uh. I'd rather be by myself, you know what I'm saying? You know, which I don't have to, you know, do that now. But I'm saying, but when I was having all those problems, I would rather have been by myself. You know what I'm saying? If I can have peace in my home, peace, if you need to have peace and, you know, in your home, you know, because you gonna, that's where you're going to lay your head and that's where you're going to spend the majority of your time. You definitely need peace in your home. So when I, you know, when I was going through all that and then when I got on my own and no longer was married, I, I was happy. You know what I'm saying? Cause I had peace. I didn't have to. I didn't have to be up all night long fuss somebody fussing about nothing. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have to do that. I go to bed when I get ready. Wake up when I get ready. Cook if I want to cook. If I didn't want to cook, I didn't have to cook. You know what I'm saying? I was happy. You know what I'm saying? So you know, just because you are in a relationship or you are um. Happiness and not finding no man, happiness and not finding no woman, happiness in Jesus. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, a lot of times we, we say, well, we'll be happy when we get married, but we should be happy already because we, 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 are, the, we are the child of the most high God. You know what I'm saying? You know, so we should be happy already. So I'm happy. And then God put me up with somebody that's already happy. We, can ha we can't do nothing but be happy. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I'm not looking for that man to make me happy. When, when, when God is, you know, I'm going to put God first and he's going to, uh, he's going to make me happy, you know, because he loves me unconditionally. You know what I'm saying? You know, he's not going to love me if I do this right. Or he's not going to love me if I do that right. He's not going to love me. He, you know, he's, he's always going to love me. His love is, is unconditional. His love don't change. You know, just like with some people, you know, they love change. You know, they may love you today and then in the day and they love you today and the day they don't like you no more. You know what I'm saying? You know, they don't wait till tomorrow. They love you today and don't like you today. You know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? But God love is unconditional. He going to love you regardless. Like I said, I ain't playing. I'm staying on here alone. But let me go back to my, my lesson. Said um, that this goes back to walking in demonstration that even during praise and worship, the spirit of God is moving just like Paul and Silas prayed and sang songs. We must do the same thing. It does not require a pretty voice to contact God. God heard their prayers and worship and loose their bands. God is not a respecter of persons. He is waiting on us to pray and sing songs to him. So just like um, though Paul and Silas, when they prayed and sung songs, they, 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 uh, bounds, they was bound, they was bound, now they was loose. You know, they were still in prison, but they was loose. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, when we're going through, you know, you know, if you don't try everything else, you don't try talking about it. You don't try uh, uh, going to this person about it. You don't went to that person about it. You don't went around the corner for the, about it. Then now let's get now. Let's try it God's way. God said praise and worship. So get in God's presence and praise and worship, even pray and then listen to what God is saying to you. And a lot of times God's going to, he's going to talk to us. If we just listen, he's going to tell us what we exactly what we need to do. You know, but many times we don't stay down there long enough. We, uh, we praise, you know, we get in praise and worship and, you know, and we, after we, uh, been down there a while and we feel like we through, we get up and going on about our business. And now God wanted to talk to us, but now he can't talk to us because we don't already got up. And so, you know, listen to what God is saying concerning this situation. He got the answer, y'all. You know, say, I know he, we can go to people and we can get um, wisdom from other people, but God has the ultimate source. Go to him first, you know, go to him, pray to him, and listen to what he's saying. He's going to tell you exactly what you need to do for every situation. He said, God is not no respected person. He is waiting on us to pray and sing songs to him. God can do mighty things in our lives. He can. If you allow him to, will you allow God to do mighty things in your life? Will you allow God to help heal you of all the wounds that you're carrying around? Would you allow God to do it so you can be free? Would you allow God to do it? Say, um, yeah, we, we have to be willing. Are you willing to allow God to heal you? Are you willing? Because, I mean, what you're doing now ain't, ain't working. 
So why not try God? You done tried everything else. Can, can we can we try God now? You know what I'm saying? We you know what I'm saying? Many of us go, you like I said, we just do everything else. But now we don't we need to try God. Get in God's presence. And you know if you don't if you need to repent, repent. Tell ask God to forgive you. You know, and He does forgive you. Ask God to heal you in those hair areas. Ask God to heal your heart in those areas. If you feel it rejected, or if you feel it um, humiliated, or you uh, sometimes, you know, back in the day when I was married, my first husband, you know, I didn't get mad, I got even. But guess what? He didn't help me none. You know what I'm saying? I ain't know no better. I just thought if instead of when he do something crazy, I just go do something even crazier. But what, what, how it made me look? Made me look bad, right? You know what I'm saying? It didn't make me look good at all. Just, just, you know, just cause they doing something, then go do something even crazier. Come on now. It didn't, it didn't make me look, look good at all. God had to heal me of that, that, that too. You know, I don't get mad. You know, I don't get mad. I don't get even no more. Cause I, I, I'm healed in that area. You know what I'm saying? I may get mad. You, the word of God said, be angry, but sin not. I, I'm back there. I was sinning. I'm just being real, being transparent. You know, back there, I, when I get mad, I would get even. I, I, I'm being transparent. But now, I get mad, I don't get even. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm healed of that. I'm no longer that person. That I used to do that back there. In them days, I'm no longer that person. I, what, you know, I, uh, I don't, I'm no, no longer that person. So I've been delivered from that. So why, why am I I'm already delivered? Why would I go back to that when I'm already delivered? You know what I'm saying? So, you know, if you're delivered in an area, stay delivered. Don't go back to that. Stay delivered. You know what I'm saying? Because God has a place he wants to take you. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times we always say, uh, if, you know, um, I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting on God to do this. But God already told you to move. And then you said, uh, then God is saying for you to do certain things. And, you know, um, next thing you know, if you're back doing the back, what you used to do before you got saved, now you done backslid. So now you got to come back to God. You know what I'm saying? Why don't you just stay in God while you're there? You know what I'm saying? We, uh, because we, as the people of God, we don't, we don't handle stuff the way the world do. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Back then, back then, the world used to get even. You know, I, was, I used to get, I don't get mad. I got even, I'm just being real. I used to do that. You know what I'm saying? But now I do as the I do as the Lord does because I'm I'm a child I'm a child of God. So now I pray, I pray with well, Lord saving, filling with the Holy Ghost and fire, and praying from a pure heart. You know what I'm saying? I'm not praying no witchcraft prayers. You know that God get him in this and this and that and that. No, I'm not doing that. You know what I'm saying? I'm praying from a pure heart. Praying I'm praying for God to save, fill with the Holy Ghost and fire. God moved mighty in his life like never before, you know, different things like that. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm not pre wine. I'm not praying no witchcraft prayers, but I'm P-R-A-Y-N, P-R-A-Y-I-N. P-R-A-Y-I-N. I'm praying from a pure heart this time. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not getting even. I'm not trying to get even with nobody. You know what I'm saying? You know, because uh, Jesus, God had already said, vengeance was his. He will repay. So why is you trying to get back somebody and you end up trying to get them back? Next thing you know, you in jail. You know, you now you got to have to have a bond when you oh, would have just let God deal with it. God know how to touch pe these people's hearts. God know how to uh, get in touch with these people. God is everywhere. He's everywhere where you, he's where places that you can't go. He, he sees everything this person is doing. He sees everything. Don't nothing get by God. You know what I'm saying? So I'm had me, you know, done already been delivered and set free. And so now I'm gonna get mad. I wanna go back to where I was. And uh so I see they be, see his vehicle. So I'm gonna slash his tire. Guess what? I'm going to jail. You know what I'm saying? Because if they see me, I'm going to jail. And so now I'm in jail. Done went because I done went back instead of going forward. The enemy, that's what the enemy wants us to do. He wants us to go backwards, but we're not going backwards. You in, you in Christ, stay in Christ while you're in Christ and continue to go forward. We know, you know, allow God to be God in your life. I'm not God. You're not God. I can't change nobody's heart. I can pray. 
I you can't change nobody's heart, but you can pray. But it's take God is one is is the one that's gonna change people's hearts. But if you get out the way, I promise you that God is gonna change your heart because He's done done things some in my life when I got out of the way and stayed out of His business. Cause I have been prophesied two or three times. God said, "Stay out of His business." I said, "Oh, okay." I see his business. I how his business, and they begin to explain. Us. Oh yeah, you right. Okay, I'm guilty. Uh huh. I'm gonna stay out of God's business and let. Guess what? Let God be God in, in their life. You know what I'm saying? Cause let let them have their own experience in God. You know what I'm saying? Let God be God in their life, and you let God be God in your life, and then you go on and do what God has told you to do. You uh, you give your life to Christ and begin to live a life that's pleasing unto God. And, and, um, and God start leading you a certain way, go the way God is leading you. You know what I'm saying? Quit worrying about, quit, keep, do it. Mm, I just heard this scripture here. Don't be like Lot's wife. You know, you know how Lot's wife did? When they, they was leaving Sodom and Gomorrah, the angels told them not to look back. So when she got ready to leave Sodom and Gomorrah, she looked back and she turned up what? Turned into a pill of salt, what she refused to be. Salt, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, don't don't be be looking in back, you know, when God is trying to push you forward. Go where God is leading you. Continue to move forward in God. And God will deal with those people. And next thing you know, you may get a phone call or whatever. And they say, hey, I just want to let you know, um, I went to church last night. And um, the preacher was preaching. And they said, you say church, this person don't even go to church, but they went to church last night. So this is God moving now. This is, this is God. Okay. And so I went to church last night and the preacher was preaching and he did an altar call and the, sub, the spirit of the Lord was something kept telling me, get up and go to the altar. So I got up and went to the altar and got saved and full of the Holy ghost. And that's God. See, God can do that. You know what I'm saying? We can't nagging ain't going to do it, but God can do it. So if we allow God to be God in our lives and the lives of whoever we praying for or whoever we uh, exceeding, interceding for, then you next thing you know, you're going to get a call and, and then you're going to get, you're going to hear some good news of what God is doing in their life. It said right here, Paul and Silas just spoke the word in faith and authority and the girl was cured of the demonic spirit. So we just got to speak the word in faith and authority. Use your authority. You have authority. Many of us don't feel like we have it. But you know, if, if uh, when God allows certain things, you know, because you know, the enemy can't do nothing against us unless uh, God allows it. So when the enemy comes at us like a flood, we're going to lift up a standard against him. You know what I'm saying? And that's the word of God. Walk in that authority. God has given you that authority. So when anything coming at you, you already know most of the time when stuff coming out of you at you at out of left field, you already know that's the enemy. Come on, y'all. Y'all already know that's the enemy. You already you you already know, and he'll use people too. People that you think you know, he'll use you too if you ain't careful. You know what I'm saying? And then you know they come at you, come at you all all in left field, saying all kind of crazy stuff. And that's what what they it, the enemy does it to get you to draw you out of character, so you can act unseemly, so you can go back to where you come from. You know, go back in them them um. I don't get mad, I get even days. No, we ain't going back there. We don't get mad and get even day. We don't retaliate. No, that's that's God's job. We what we're gonna do is gonna pray for them, pray they get saved, full of the Holy Ghost, and keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? We can't we can't drag nobody kicking and screaming to the altar. It's gonna take God to change their hearts. Just like He changed your heart, He's gonna change their heart as well. But you know, many times it may take time because many times with us, we didn't just come on our own, you know. Uh, you know, we, 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 we was out there for a while before we came in. So, you know, allow, allow your, you know, maybe it's your child or whatever. Maybe it's your spouse or whoever it is. Or maybe it's your uncle, your auntie, or your mama, your daddy, or, you know, whoever. Uh, allow them to have their experience with God. God has to deal with them at, they, at, they, at his level. Let God deal with them on his level. And when, it, he, when you will know without a shadow of doubt, that they been they don't had an encounter with God when they come tell you what uh what what and what they don't had what happened to them you know what I'm saying and then when you begin to listen to what their story you're like oh yeah that was God I know that was God and see it, God was able to do it without your help you know what I'm saying only thing you God need from you is to pray 
He don't need no help with nothing. Trust me. He got it. He got he got full control of everything. So we have the same power dwelling on the inside of us today. All we have to do is speak in faith that God will move on your behalf in any situation. So, you know, we got to speak in faith. But, you know, this, this particular scripture, you know, we, we are we talking about walking in authority? You got to have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. You got to be saved, full of the Holy Ghost, and, you know, and walking in, you know, in uh, the calling that God has on your life. And, you know, then, then, you're not, then you'll be able to walk in authority because there's no, you, you can't have authority unless you're in Christ. You know, you can try to do it the, the, the way the enemy does it, you know, through familiar spirits, but you're going at it illegally. You know, you know, God is not pleased with anybody coming illegally, you know, try to um, do like divination, witchcraft and all that stuff. He's not, he's not, he's not pleased with that. Like he's not pleased with that. You know what I'm saying? But you, when you, but you got to do it God's way. There's no way you can't, you can't uh, come in any kind of way. You got to always come through Jesus. And a lot of you may, may teach in that. You can go get, get to God without going through Jesus. That's a lie. You got to go through Jesus. That's the only way you can get to God. He said, it is our job to pray and worship, but it's God's job to heal. So if you know, it, it's not, a, it's only our job that we're going to pray, we're going to worship, we're going to fast. We're going to do all that stuff. Read the word of God. We're going to do all that. But it's God's ultimate job to heal. So, you know, you know, allow God to be God. Like I said, I didn't mean to get on him, you know, but I, you know, as I got the teaching, I got, get, got excited, you know, but uh, be, allow God to be God. And then at the end of this, this particular uh, day is a prayer. And um, some of them have prayers at the end. Some of them have um, declarations at the end. So I'm going to pray this prayer that's in this book, and then I'm going to be through. I'm going to get off of here. It said, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come before you today to ask that you um, that you be in the midst of worship as I worship you in spirit of truth. In Jesus' name, Lord, forgive me of any sin, knowingly and knowingly, that I may have done that may have separated me from your presence. In Jesus' name, I repent so that I can get back in right standing with you on today. I do not want anything hindering my prayers or my worship to you. Lord, just like you came selling to Paul and Silas' rescue, I know you can come to my rescue too. Lord, I need you to intervene on my behalf today because the enemy is trying to heal me in on every side. Lord, I need a way of escape from the enemy on today in Jesus' name. Lord, hide me in the secret place and keep me covered under your wings in Jesus' name. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief so that I can believe you for the impossible in my life on today in Jesus' name. Lord, I speak to my storm and command it to move out of my, out of my life right now in Jesus' name. Lord, let the storm be replaced with your peace that passes all understanding in Jesus' name. Lord, thank you for moving on my behalf today in Jesus' name. Amen. So this is the prayer that's behind this particular day. Like I said, many of the days have prayers. And many other days have declarations, but you know, I just talked, you know, I just, um, wanted, God wanted me to come over here and, and uh, tell you about the book. And I was, and told me just teach out of this particular, uh, day, you know, the day was the word for uh, God for today, you know, so you can get it, in, you can get it and you can get in your prayer closet and you can pray these prayers, you know, and maybe put your name in it. You know, I always put, and when I'm praying, I always add my name to them, you know what I'm saying? to my to the scripture make them personal but you know this is was a powerful teaching on today that you know um that when we when we get in worship and we get in prayer and we um praising god that there's no way in the world just like paul and silas when they when they begin one began to pray a prayer and one began to sing a song they got in praise and worship and then the um it was an earthquake in the prison and all the, their shackles was had fallen off of them and they was no longer uh bound you know what i'm saying so just the same thing that with them is the same thing with us you know the bible's still true it's still true for us today so if they had to the praise and worship and they had to get in god's presence don't you think we got to don't you think we need to to get in god's presence as many times as we can throughout the day there's no we cannot spend too much time in god's presence so, you know, if you're going through a storm in your life and, you know, uh, you know, we, we have the tendency, like I said, to go to this different pe the, all these different people, which is fine to have people pray for us and everything. But in the ultimate thing we got to do, we got to get in God's presence for ourselves. You know, they can't get in God's presence for me. 
you know, I may ask certain people, but they can't get in God's presence for me. I got to get in God's presence for myself. You got to get in God's presence for yourself. You want healing and deliver from anything, get in God's presence and, and allow the Holy Spirit to do what he want to do in you. Uproot everything in your heart that is not of God. So you can, when you come out of that, out of praise and worship, after you done been in the holies of holies, you won't come out healed, delivered and set free. You know what I'm saying? And so now you can go on and go on with your life and do what God has told you to do. You know what I'm saying? So now we don't have no, we don't, we don't have to be staying on neutral and not moving. Allow God to do what he want to do in you. Praise and worship. You know what I'm saying? I, I do it all the time. You know, I sing a song, you know what I'm saying? And you know, I, I ain't got the prettiest voice, but I do make a joyful noise. It sound good to me and it sound good to God too. You know, so I, I, you know, when I begin to praise and worship, I, I, I immediately feel his presence and come in. And I just tell him, I just be real with God. Be real with God. You, you know where you are. He knows where you are. He knows where you are spiritually. There's, we can't fool God. You know, we're making fool people. We definitely can't fool God. So be real with God. Tell him exactly where you are in your relationship with him. God, I'm having a problem with rejection. I need you to help heal me in that area. Guess what? He'll help heal you in that area. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, God, I'm having a problem. Um, you know, people talking about me, and I just feel some type of way. I'm offended at them. God, has God help me with being offended. And God would tell me, when I told God I was offended, what he told me? Pray for him. I said, huh? He said, pray for him. I said, oh, Lord. So now everybody that offends me, guess what? I pray for him. And I'm praying for him a pure heart. That God moved mighty in the life, that he blessed them. You know, if they're not saved, Lord, save them, fill them with the Holy Ghost and fire. Have your way in their life like never before, God. And Lord, move mighty in their life. You know what I'm saying? And then going on about my business, you know, and keep praying for them. Next thing I know. They, they deliver, they set free, they full of the Holy Ghost, they saved. You know, they're no longer the same person, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, it's going to take us being who God has called us to be. You know, you are, you are intercessor, so intercede. You know, you are, um, you know, praise in the worship, get in worship, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, uh, many times God has, has me, you know, I'm, I'm listening, I'll be in the prayer room or whatever, I'll be praying, and then the song drop in my spirit. And I begin to sing it. And next thing you know, I feel his presence come in the room. So many times he gives us these songs. You know, it ain't just, they just ain't running through our mind for nothing. He giving us a song so we can worship. So we can worship those songs. So, you know, so when he gives us these songs, just worship. Get Go in worship. And when you hear these songs, begin to sing these songs. You know, if you have to, go on YouTube, find it, find the song, and begin to sing that song. Get in worship, and the next thing you know, you 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 don't went that you you deep in, you in the holies of holies, and the next thing you know, all this this stuff you got, all this stuff that's on your shoulders is falling off, and when you come out of worship, you lighter, you feel better, you happy, you have joy, you know what I'm saying? So if you got to get in praise and worship every day, then do it. Whatever you got to do to make it, you do it. You know because um. Many times he gave me these songs, um, and just like he did me on Sunday, he gave me one song that morning when I got up in the prayer room, and he gave me another song when I got ready to get my clothes on to go ready to go to church. And God was just saying, worship me, worship me. A lot of us going through, and, you know, we're trying to, our mind going down to nothing, trying to figure out on our own when God said, worship me, worship me, worship me. He said, my answers, his, your answers, a lot of answers that you see is in worship. Because with Prophet's case, she always tell us that worship brings miracles. And they do. They do. I know I know it brought one for me. Um, I had gave a testimony, um, you know, how uh, I'm out, I got, got a water bill, $200 water bill, you know, when my husband first moved here. I was like, $200 is just nobody him but me and my husband. So I go to the water bill place, and they're going to tell me, well, maybe you got a leak. I said, oh, ain't no leak going on there. So they sent somebody, they ain't find no leak. And I said, well, Lord. I said, um, I said, well, I'm going to worship. I remember what Prophet K said, so I went in worship. So I began to worship. I worship all night, night, and I got up the next morning in worship, and I on my way to the water bill place, they told me to come back the next day. I went there to the water bill place, and I, I prayed in tongues on my way to the water bill place. I prayed in tongues on my way to the water bill place, and so then when I got to the 
water be placed. I went in there and they saw their area. I didn't go in there being ugly. I didn't go in there being nasty. I didn't go in there talking loud. I didn't go in there cussing nobody out. I went in there and acting like who I am, the child of God. And so when they saw, they looked at the computer and saw they had a new computer system. So it was a computer error. So they went in there and looked and they said, oh, okay, we see the problem. So your, your water bill is like uh, 70 something dollars. I said, okay. So I paid that. But after then, you know, I still go in worship. Hey, now my water bill ain't nothing but, but uh, the whole highest ever been was like $48. You know what I'm saying? So worship bring miracles. So, you know, I'm just, you know, here to remind you, you know, get in worship. You spend some time with the Lord. You know, um, we can never spend too much time with God. Allow God to heal those areas in your heart so you can be free. Don't you want to be free? And, you know, be God wants us free so we don't have to be uh, struggling and straining. We mind moving not in the nut. Now we ain't sleeping. Now we got insomnia. I've been there, done there. I ain't going back there. I ain't going back there. You know, I, I ain't going back there. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going back there. I'm not having insomnia anymore. Go guess what? I'm getting in God's presence. Um, um, you know, you come in my home, you're going to feel the presence of God because uh, that's what we do here. We we pray. My husband pray, I pray. You know, that, that's what you're going to feel here, the presence of God. You know what I'm saying? Because we know we need him. You know, we can't. I can't do nothing without him. You know what I'm saying? I can't even get on this live without God. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, when you go in your, go, we go in and somebody come in your home, they should be able to feel the presence of God because, why? Because you've been in his presence more than one time. You know, once, not once a month. Every once, you know, however many times you need to be in God's presence, you get in his presence, you know. Even teach your children how to get in God's presence. When my grandbaby was, is here with me, when she's staying with me, guess what? We worship. I put on some worship music, and I get before her, and I show her how to worship. Next thing about, look over there at the corner of my eyes. She, she had, had, had hands up with her eyes closed. Yeah, teach these children what they need to know. They're not too young to know about uh, getting in worship. They're not, not too young to know about prayer. They're not too young to know about anything because the enemy is slick. He tried to get them at a young age. So we got to be even, Connor, you know, we got to be even wiser. Go ahead and, and tell, teach them what they need to know so they can, when anything come up against them, they already know what granny worship. Let me get in worship. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I remember what granny said. Let me say what granny said. And next thing you know, with, with childlike faith, you know what I'm saying? They are automatically, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, teach your children. I'm going I'm to say that. Teach your children. Teach your grandchildren. You know, if you know, uh, teach them what they need to know. Teach them the word of God. Read the word of God to them. You know, at the young age, get those, oh, those Bibles. Um, you know, the uh, picture Bibles, you know, with the little stories. Um, I, I, we read one, we, we, when my granddaughter's here, we read her bedtime stories out the book. And it has, um, it has, you know, the little child stories that are only about maybe a, a two minutes long. And then we ask her questions uh, concerning the, um, the story and she answers the questions. That's how you teach them. They teach, you teach them by, by um, demonstration, same thing. By walking in demonstration, we read it and we go over it and she give, and we answer the question, she answers the question and now she knows that demonstration. So, you know, so um, that's all I'm going to say on today. I hope someone got some out of the lesson. So if you like to, to have this book, like I said, some powerful teachers in this book. So because when I was reading um, my, um, Prophet K had sent me the, um, the, my, my rough draft to read over it and I began to read I could feel the fire of God on it so you know not because I wrote it but because me and the Holy Ghost wrote it so you know as this powerful teaching that we just got to teaching you know teach you about praise and worship you know they that Paul and Silas they was in the bottom of the jail shackled down for they praise and worship so why can't we for most of us walk around here free why can't why we can't praise and worship God so we can get free huh why, why we can't? So we can, you know, we just got to take the initiative to do it. So anyway, I love y'all. I pray that y'all will have a blessed rest of your day. God bless you.